park hanging out with your friends. Out of nowhere, a stranger comes and abducts you. This stranger puts you in their car and drives you to a facility. And at this facility, they put you into a room with plain white walls and only a chair for you to sit in. You'll be in this facility for the rest of your life. How would this make you feel? Would you be, would you go insane? Would you rather die than be trapped here? This is what SeaWorld has done to orca whales, where they live their entire existence in small swimming pools, swimming in circles. Large and intelligent animals such as orcas don't belong in captivity. And this is why I believe you should never go to SeaWorld. If you support SeaWorld by, going, by visiting their parks, you allow them to keep animals in family. First, I'll tell you about some of the, um, how keeping whales in captivity affects their mental health, and then I'll tell you about how it affects their physical health. Last, I'll tell you about some of the ways that SeaWorld lies or misleads in order to keep getting you to go to your, their parks. By the end of my speech, I hope you'll decide to never go to SeaWorld. Now that you know my main points, let's jump right into how being in captivity affects the orca's mental health. Orcas are highly intelligent animals, and in nature, they swim thousands of miles in their lifetimes, and they have friends and, family, and families and complex relationships within their pods. Orchids at SeaWorld live in pools that are incredibly small compared to the vastness of the ocean. This change in habitat is detrimental to their mental health. According to investigative journalist Marine Mitra in her article in Earth Island Journal, SeaWorld used to collect whales from the ocean and bring them to their parks. Now all whales currently at SeaWorld are bred in captivity from the original whales that they captured. Mark Beckoff, who has a PhD in animal emotions, states that orcas experience major psychological trauma from being in captivity. In the past, orcas have viciously murdered humans while being in captivity at SeaWorld. However, there has never been a single case of an orca killing a human in the wild. A former SeaWorld trainer named Jeff Ventra is an expert in orca behavior. He states that the cases of orcas killing their trainers were manifestations of stress, even madness, and animals forced into miserable and unnatural conditions. This emotional trauma is consistent with what happens to other animals in, in captivity as well. And the common effects of captivity that orcas specifically experience is PTSD, anxiety, and depression. This was established by Dr. Hope Ferdosian and her colleagues, which was published in the National Library of Medicine. Being, being forced to swim in circles and do tricks for money is very tiring and depressing, and no wonder some of them have gone crazy and wanted to murder. Now that you know how SeaWorld's practices affect the whale's mental health, I'll move on to how it affects their physical health. First off, orcas in captivity have a much shorter lifespans than they would in the wild. A common cause of death in orcas at SeaWorld and, the, and other areas of captivity are lung infections due to bacterial ammonia. This is caused by unhealthy living conditions and as well as bacteria in the water that they're in. As of 2016, all the whales that were brought to SeaWorld from the ocean are dead. And none of them lived as long as they could have if they remained in the ocean. In 2016, one of SeaWorld's most famous orcas named Tilikum died at the age of 35. According to Natasha Daly at, the, at National Geographic, orcas in the wild sometimes live to be 60 to 80 years old. Sadly, many whales at SeaWorld don't live this long. Many whales at SeaWorld also sustain injuries due to self-harm. Due to depression that orcas experience due to their pathetic living conditions, orcas have attempted suicide to end their suffering. SeaWorld's whales have been observed banging their heads against the side of their pools or trying to drown themselves as a means of ending their lives. Some whales have even broken teeth trying to bite through the metal gates that contain them. Another form of physical damage that whales at SeaWorld experience is dorsal fin collapse. In reference once more to Mark Beckoff, PhD, orcas in the wild will swim up to 100 miles every single day in straight lines. And due to the size and shape of the pools at SeaWorld, the whales are forced to swim in circles for years. This unusual swimming pattern causes their dorsal fins to collapse. This image shows SeaWorld's telecom on the right with a collapsed dorsal fin, and on the left, or sorry, on the left, and on the right is a normal dorsal fin on an orca in the wild. And this is a sign that the whales are being, not being treated well. During his life in captivity, Tilikum here killed three people. 
As you can see, sea rolls, whales experience a lot of physical damage. Now I'll tell you some of the ways that sea roll has lied or misled in order to keep making profit. According to SeaWorld's official website, living to the age of 35 is normal for an orca, even in the wild, they claim. And as mentioned earlier, this is simply not true. Orcas in the wild have been reported to live up to 45 years longer than this. And SeaWorld claims this in order to absolve themselves of guilt if their whales die at younger ages. SeaWorld has also been known to hide autopsy reports from the public and this is presumably because the whale's cause of death will reveal that they're guilty. SeaWorld also claims that dorsal fin collapse is normal, while male orcas' dorsal fins collapse 100% of the time while in captivity, according to Dr. Ingrid Visser and her research on orcas. In the wild, dorsal fin collapse is very rare. And Dr. Visser says that dorsal fin collapse is always a bad sign of health, a sign of bad health. The fact that SeaWorld denies this, despite all the research that proves how true it is, shows me that they're liars. And there are many instances where SeaWorld has lied or misled in order to keep their good image, good image. Um, but I don't have the time to share all of them with you today. So if you are still curious about how SeaWorld has lied or misled, um, you can check out the movie Blackfish. It's a documentary on Netflix that exposes SeaWorld for all of their inhumane practices. Finally, I will conclude my speech on why you should never go to SeaWorld. Today you have learned how SeaWorld's practices affect the orcas, both their mental health and their physical health, and I've also shared with you some of the ways that SeaWorld lies or misleads in order to keep making profit. Because of all the reasons I have listed today, I believe that you should never go to SeaWorld. And I want to make it clear that I'm not shaming anyone who has gone to SeaWorld. I used to go to SeaWorld all the time as a kid. However, I just stopped going once I learned how bad it is. And I think that you should do the same now that you know. If you choose to not support SeaWorld based off of what I told you today, they will eventually lose their ability to torture other uh, orcas and other animals that they keep in captivity. I personally would much rather spend my money elsewhere and I hope that you'll choose to do the same. Thank you.